Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Jimix. Welcome to the channel. New, welcome back for not. And today we're gonna be covering the director's take that came out yesterday um, about the mid-season patch <laughs> and what they're gonna do to the tanks this season. So um, yeah, this should be pretty interesting. I heard it's pretty juicy, and um, yeah, we'll get into it. But as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and yeah. Uh, let's get into it. So this is literally like, I think this came out a day or two after um, the hotfix that nerfed Orissa and Venture. So we're, we're getting we're getting a lot of stuff this week so far. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So hey everyone, I'm glad to see all of you digging into season 10. We've loved seeing you welcome our newest hero, Venture, and enjoy the Mirror Watch event playable now in the arcade. However, this week, I want to look ahead to our mid-season update and discuss some changes we have on the way for the tank role. In Overwatch 2, tanks are the imposing heroes who take the burnt of the the brunt of the fight while enabling their teammates to secure eliminations while tanks are a big target for opponents to focus on many team comps aim to burn down a tank's hp quickly or they get moved around a lot from displacement abilities very true we receive feedback that tanks can feel can either feel like they get taken down too quickly in a fight or that they're impossible to take down which has been pretty much the common consensus um high level players and lower level players it seems like you know and even in my experience it a lot of times you'll go into a team fight and it'll be like oh they have zen ana or something something crazy or sometimes dps is just hitting shots or widow is in her and is hitting her headshots you just get headshot twice and you just kind of explode as soon as you walk out a spawn and it, it gets kind of crazy or as the tank or team going against like an Orisa or something like that, <laughs> you'll you'll be shooting Orisa forever, and then she just never dies because of fortify, uh, s s javelin spin, pump wheels the entire team. You just can't kill her. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the case. And in a weird way, it's kind of just contradicting itself. Like, how are you exploding? What else you're impossible to kill? Ah, this game. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so our mid-season update is going to help balance how many hits tanks can take to stand the fight better. Hmm, okay. First, we're specifically buffing the tank passive to have a 25% damage reduction from headshots, which should help cut down on being burst down in a fight. Okay. Okay. So their their solution is to make tanks even tankier. So they chose to make sure that tanks feel like they're tanks. I don't know if that's a good thing though, because we've seen with Arissa how oppressive she can be because she just won't die. So are we going to be? And I'm gonna finish reading this, but I'm just like off rip. I'm I'm automatically thinking, are we going to get to a point where tanks aren't unkillable? However they stay in the fight so long that eventually tanks are going to get a nerf in general. Like individually tanks are going to start getting nerfed because if all the tanks are just staying alive. Like, and especially we're really talking about tanks with staying power. So, you know, your Malgas, your, uh, I think Junker queen could be something obviously Arissa, um, obviously roadhog your tanks with real staying power. Um, even Ryan actually, cause he has shield your tanks with real staying power are going to get nerfed. And then your dive tanks are gonna be are gonna feel overtuned, but they're not. I don't know. That's kind of what I'm thinking immediately. That's that's just my thought so far. Uh, let's keep reading. We're also increasing the knockback resistance for tanks from 30% to 50%, which should allow them to hold the front line a lot more and not feel as subjected to displacement abilities. Good. However, I do want them to be specific I, I want them to individually balance tank interactions too um so ryan charge obviously makes sense um but also like malga charge and what else what else am i thinking of um uh sigma rock i want i i, I think they I, I also want them to make sure those interactions stay intact um as well because in general those are the only real characters with real major CC at this point. And then there's like Brig. So I'm curious how those interactions look um, with that knockback resistance resistance between tanks, at least. Anyway, let's keep reading. We're also making some global gameplay changes that impact tanks. One is that we're reverting the armor damage reduction back to reducing five damage per projectile with up to a 50% maximum. Okay. All right. 
Okay, let me keep reading. This means heroes like Reaper or Tracer will have more work to do to take down heroes like Reinhardt. Heroes with high burst damage per projectile will still be effective, but these kinds of tanks have better means to counterplay that type of damage. Okay. I see. So it, they're, they're really just making them beefier and just a lot more resistant to things so they feel like tanks. But right now, I'm not going to lie, it seems like they're just kind of dealing with... Well, I guess that's fair. They're dealing with DPS just gunning them down too easily, which which is generally how, how things work. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, next, we made a light change to our overall HP recovery passive that will enable mobile tanks to get back to the front lines faster. The health regeneration passive for all heroes will no longer recover 20 HP per second out of combat, but instead recover 10 health plus 5% of their maximum HP per second. This means a hero like Reinhardt will recover their health at 45 health per second in a roll queue match. Okay. 45 health per second. Okay, okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm like running a simulation in my head on how, on just my mini simulation on how these interactions look, and I'm just like, okay. So that gives, okay. So all heroes with their recovery passive, okay. All right. So tanks, you know, getting into cover using using your natural cover, you'll be able to heal a bit faster, which is nice. But the thing about it is, if you're able to go into cover to heal a bit, and you're able to heal a bit faster now. You also have uh, reduction towards headshots. You also have knockback resistance. You also have, um, and I guess, if you have armor, armor damage reduction back to reducing five damage. Yeah, so like, and if you have armor, right? <laughs> right? It's like, then you're reducing five damage. Per now you're just kind of, tanks are virtually going to be unkillable. And that's kind of been the issue that we've been having as players, though, at the same time, right? Because our complaint with Arissa is she feels unkillable. So now if all the tanks feel unkillable, and it's not only, uh, yes, yeah, she feels unkillable, but from a gameplay standpoint and a gameplay loop, it's kind of boring shooting a tank forever. So maybe what they're doing here is making it to where, and this is just me shooting off, off rip, maybe they're making it to where, because the meta has generally been kill the tank and you kind of win, at least early Overwatch 2. Now I don't feel like that's the case so much. Now, like, you know, you have things like your supports or like just supports in general that have a lot of different tools that like sometimes it's worth just killing, trying to kill supports more often if you can. But sometimes you have to kill the tank so you can kill the supports. So now they're making it to where it's almost going to be like tanks fight, just kind of temper each other, just kind of hold each other back, basically. Like, I'm going to keep you at bay while also trying to deal with your team. And then we're going to kill your team and then come back to you. I think that's the gameplay loop that they're trying to create where now DPS is going to have to do a lot more work killing other DPS, not being able to focus on tanks as much. Support's going to have to be a bit more playmakers. Um, like, you know, that's kind of what they're trying to get them into anyway. Um, and tanks are really just going to be the role where you're going to be holding the team together by just holding that tank back, holding them back until your team, your DPS can kind of clean up the enemy supports, the enemy's DPS, and then you all like converge on the tank it's going back to front basically and especially with a character like venture that's even more possible now Ooh, okay all right <laughs> Altogether, these changes should have an impact on some of the pain points our tank players are experiencing as well as the balance of the game i have a feeling we'll see a lot of, of movement in the meta over the remainder of season 10 a lot of movement in the meta does that is he saying from a standpoint of just we're going to see, we're going to be testing a lot of like what's good and what's not. Or does he mean like movement meta where, because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking right now, right? If you have your tanks with a lot of staying power, just not dying, then you're going to be playing dive. And that means you're playing your Winston, you're playing your Sig, you're playing, or not Sig, I'm sorry, your, uh, your ball, you're playing your, your D.Va, right? Is, is that what he means? And then of course you're going to be playing your movement, your movement supports you know movement creep is such a thing man <laughs> it's such a thing man uh i don't know we'll see um and some more individual changes junker queen is getting a buff commanding shout which will be activated even if you are channeling other abilities like charnage or rampage hmm that's cool okay and its cooldown is getting reduced to 12 seconds 
Okay. This change should allow her to be more engaged in intense fights where you need to charge her more quickly. I think those are valid, uh, valid, valid buffs, and I think she needs them. Um, I was literally just going... I just went against, like, two or three Junker Queens in a row. And, yeah, they weren't doing nothing to my Malga, man. <laughs> Gr granted, counter swap, all that good stuff. But, like, some of them were just, like, Nama one trick. And they just weren't doing anything to my Malga. So, I ain't gonna lie. She needs, she needs some stuff like this. I'm not gonna lie. Um, with Wrecking Ball, we're seeing some creative play with the changes to his Grappling Claw. However, his ability to contribute to the fight is getting a small buff. The impact damage from a full charge swing using grappling claw is getting increased from 50 to 60. And pile driver is increasing is increasing the enemy movement lockout from 0.5 to 0.75 seconds. And finally, minefield will be a little more threatening with explosion damage increased from 130 to 165 and knockback increased from 5 to 10 meters. Ball meta? Wait a minute, ball meta? I just called it to. I was like, yo, low key, we're going to be moving. We might be moving into a into a dive meta. We it might be dive meta in a bit. And now ball is getting a buff like that. And like we're gonna have to I obviously have to see like ball is still like I still feel like ball isn't very like he's not the greatest on all the different Overwatch 2 maps. However, like he's very map dependent. However, the map set he's good on, that's crazy. I'm not gonna lie, that's huge. These the, you're, look, people are gonna be making some huge plays for Wrecking Ball, and uh, I I like to see it, man. I like to see it. That's uh, that's something, man. Wow. All right, yeah, okay. And additional changes coming this midseason include some light buffs for Junkrat, Echo, and Hanzo, but we'll reveal those when you can jump and take these changes for a test drive when the mid-season patch arrives on May 14th. Woo! That's all for this week, everyone. Thanks for reading, and let's make a great game. Wow. All right. Overall, pretty interesting stuff. Overall. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. I think my major points from this, my major takeaways are, are, are definitely going to be... You know, and maybe this doesn't, you know, mean that much. Like, high rank players, you let me know if you're high rank or, you know, you have high IQ when it comes to this game. Um, my, my, my things are, obviously, from player standpoint and gameplay standpoint, hopefully things don't get boring, right, as a tank player. Because if everybody's mortal, because that's been the thing. It's like, okay, if I'm playing Orisa, you're playing Orisa, we just won't die. We have to wait for our team to clean up around us. That's kind of boring. So hopefully, right... Um, the tank interactions don't become, I'm mortal, you're immortal, okay, um, you feel me? Um, and if that does happen, I'm gonna be interested to see if we start shifting into a dive, a dive meta, right? Or a dive is just gonna become meta, because instead of us sitting here just shooting at each other, which is boring, why not I just play D.Va and you play Winston or we do the D.Va mirror or you play, you play Doom or whatever it is and we just dive each other's back lines. <laughs> and we just ignore each other and we'll just take the fight to the team. And we'll just do a, it's a 4v1. And let's just see who can pop who first. And who who can pop whose important chess pieces first. Ah, that's going to be interesting to see. And that's just my headcanon. We'll, we'll see. And then obviously like, you know, the ball change is going to be interesting. And that, honestly, the ball changes are really like feeding into this whole idea that I have in my head that we might be moving into dive. Um, And, and yeah, overall... It's going to be interesting to see. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this works. And then Junkrat, Echo, and Hanzo getting buffed. Light buffs. That's great. I like to see Echo buffs. Junkrat can get a little dangerous, but, you know, we, we like to see those two. Hanzo can also get a little dangerous, but he needs them because Widow's fucking ridiculous. Um, but anyway. Whew. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the in the comments. I'm I'm kind of half and half with it. I'm not gonna lie. We might we might be seeing a dive meta, guys, and and maybe you know you let me know if I'm if I'm reading it wrong, but we might be seeing dive meta. And as a tank player, I'm a little scared about tanks being kind of immortal. <laughs> All the tanks being immortal because they're kind of like, all right, well, if they're too impossible to take down, but also they're getting they sometimes they get blown up. All right, let's just make everybody immortal. I don't know if that's the fix. But at the same time, that's what it means to be a tank. You you know, just having staying power. And um, yeah, 
it's gonna be interesting. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, let me know if I'm if I'm if I'm on it, if I'm not. Um, and yeah, I'll see y'all soon. See y'all in game. We'll, we'll test these out in a, in a couple weeks. And uh, also popping in some streams. I'm playing Overwatch uh, every other day, something like that on stream. Uh, we play some other variety of games, things like that. Um, but yeah, all right, guys, I'm Audi. Peace. <laughs>